Backgammon is one of the oldest board games in the world, first appearing more than 3,000 years ago. This set was found on the wreck of the Vasa, dating from 1628. Boards can be very simple or very ornate, and typically come in a box form, but are often built into tables as well. Two stacks of contrasting wood blanks are prepared. They get cut into a number of wedges that get glued together in a contrasting pattern to create the game board. The wedges are small, but need to be very accurately cut, so I'm using the microdial tapering jig. The first step is to cut a taper on one edge of all of the square blanks. Set the rip fence to the size of your block, making sure that the gripper isn't going to contact the blade. Cut all of the blanks in your stacks before setting up to start cutting the wedges. These wedges are cut at 10 degrees on each side, so clearance for the gripper became an issue. I found that removing the quarter inch leg and the center leg and using the half inch leg to hold the part against the jig worked out very well, providing plenty of holding power, but allowing me to cut the blanks right down until the very end, without having to reset the gripper every time I wanted to make a cut. With the cut set up, work through the entire stack of your blanks before resetting for the next cut. Your wedges are actually the off cut, so a trailing hook mounted to the gripper ensures that they get pushed safely past the blade. The wedges being the off fall also means that, each time you work through your stack of parts, the rip fence needs to be reset to cut the next set of wedges. A stop mounted to the table saw on the outboard side of the blade ensures that each successive set of cuts will result in wedges of exactly the same size. These techniques will get you the four sets of six rows that make up a typical play area for a backgammon game. Where you use them and how you embellish your board is how you put your stamp on this project.